Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man and today I'm going to talk about antenna rotators. Putting your antenna on a rotator can possibly bring you more channels if you live between two markets with signals that are too weak to use an omnidirectional antenna. Now there is a lot of information in this video so make sure to watch the whole thing. Don't just skip through and see what rotator I'd recommend because you may miss some very important tips about using a rotator. If you're seeing me for the first time, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. This video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. It's light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold out or bulge in your pocket like most old wallets do. Cell phones have advanced from giant bricks to sleek devices, yet the wallet has remained about the same. A fat, ugly mess filled with receipts. The Ridge Wallet holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. The Ridge Wallet is the perfect gift. Everyone has an old wallet they've owned forever and no one thinks to get themselves a new one. 40,000 five-star reviewers can't be wrong. Get 10% off any Ridge wallet by going to ridge.com forward slash antenna man and typing in the keyword antenna man at checkout. This video is for informational purposes only. If you decide to purchase a rotator or set up an outdoor antenna, I highly recommend hiring a professional to do the work. Please do not attempt to install or service an outdoor antenna yourself if you do not have the skill set to do so. I'm not responsible for any damage, injury, or death that may occur. Now back to the main subject of this video. Antenna rotators have been around for decades. They used to be very common in the analog days for people who lived between markets and could only pick up a few stations from each area. Over the years, more and more TV stations have gone on the air, and antenna rotators sort of became less relevant for people who use antennas to get their local channels. In most situations, the local ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, PBS, and other major network affiliated stations come from one main direction. This means a single directional antenna pointed towards the main broadcast towers would get all of the local stations in a given market. This is probably what most of you are doing, which is completely fine. Even if you have a local station or two that come from different directions, most antennas may still pick up all stations if the antenna is pointed somewhere in the middle of the sets of transmitters or towards the weaker stations. That's because all antennas have a specific gain pattern. If a TV station is strong enough, the antenna can be pointed towards a different set of stations and still pick up that one station off axis. It's only when the signal is marginal does the antenna have to be pointed exactly in the direction of the broadcast towers. Still, there are some situations where a rotator could get you more channels, specifically if you are between two television markets. Many of you will probably say, well, just buy an omnidirectional antenna and you'll get both markets. Not quite. Most omnidirectional antennas perform poorly with moderate to weak signals. Most people who live between two markets have weak signals and an omnidirectional antenna probably would not get either market compared to a directional antenna that would pick up at least one of the markets. I do have a video on the topic of omnidirectional antennas versus directional antennas for those of you who want some more details about this. I can tell you that most situations require a directional antenna, not an omnidirectional antenna. So how do you know if you'd benefit from a rotator? If you go to the FCC DTV reception maps and type in your address, it will show you some stations you will likely pick up. If you see some stations listed as weak in yellow or red color and come from different directions, you may need a rotator to pick them up if your main antenna is not picking them up already. Many of you are probably familiar with this antenna with a built-in rotator. 
While it looks like a great deal at first, I can assure you it is a bad idea to purchase for multiple reasons. First, the rotator is known to fail in a short period of time. Second, the built-in amplifier on the antenna is also known to fail in a short period of time. When the amplifier on the antenna fails, you lose all reception and cannot do anything about it besides replace the whole antenna. If you are going to use a rotator, I would highly recommend a separate rotator to put a decent antenna on instead of using a junk antenna with a built-in rotator that will likely fail. This is the model I would recommend, the RCA VH226F. It runs about $100 on Amazon and can be used with any outdoor antenna. If you decide to purchase this model, be sure to use one of my affiliate links in the description of this video to help support my YouTube channel. I also include a link to the wire that you will need to connect the rotator to the control box as it does not come with the wire. This RCA model definitely holds up well. I've installed a few of them over the years with no callbacks. I also discussed this model with a good friend of mine who has an antenna installation business in Minnesota. He's installed them for the last five years and has not received any callbacks either. The control box on the rotator has presets you can use to set a specific direction for the antenna. That way, all you have to do is press one of the numbers on the remote to move the antenna to a specific direction. I should mention that Channel Master manufactures this rotator model, but it's been out of stock for nearly seven months. This makes me think that it may be discontinued. If their rotator comes back on the market, I will update the description of this video with a link to it. Here's a cool trick I recommend if using a rotator. Purchase a $30 DTV box to manually search for and add channels so you don't have to run a rescan every time you rotate the antenna. I attached a video in the description that gets into this tip in more detail. For the most part, you type in the RF channel a station you're trying to pick up broadcasts on onto the DTV box and rotate the antenna until you see some kind of signal show up. Hit OK on the remote to add the channel and then press the info button twice to bring up the signal meter and fine tune the direction of the antenna until you get the highest signal level possible on that specific channel. Now it's important not to put too large of a pole on top of the rotator. Depending on the size of your antenna, I would not put anything larger than a five foot pole on the rotator or the whole thing may come crashing down. Now before you go out and purchase a rotator, it might be worth checking to see what channels you'd gain. Just because you live between two markets does not necessarily mean you're guaranteed to get stations from both areas. Antenna setup. This has to be done a very specific way or it will mess up your reception. I do offer setup guidance services and custom antenna recommendations on my website at antennamanpa.com. Thanks for watching this video. A huge thanks to these folks who help support me on Patreon and are members of my YouTube channel. If you would like to help support the production of these very valuable cord cutting videos while gaining exclusive perks such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you are not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates on when I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of my video. Stay tuned to my channel for more cord cutting and antenna related information and have an awesome day.